Now, all of the employees of Lab Factory and everybody in here, they deserve a nice round of applause. Let's give them a nice round of applause. Alberto, Alfredo, his wife. I mean, you name them, they're all here. And where is Cynthia? Cynthia is up there somewhere. Cynthia, Cynthia, she's our greatest caterer. Where is Cynthia? Oh, man, you got to give a nice round of applause. She stayed up all night. She cooked all of this food. Come on, guys. Let's give her a nice round of applause. Cynthia. Come on, Cynthia. I don't see it, but there. Where is she? Cynthia, come on up. She is she's a caterer. She did she cooked all of that food. Isn't that beautiful? Let's give her a nice come on I want her now. And she's coming up here to wish you guys happy, happy Christmas and happy new year and everything. Merry Merry Christmas. I'm sorry. I'm tired. I'm tired. Welcome one more year. Thank you for coming and enjoying the holiday with us. Hopefully you'll also be here next year as well. I know we've been doing this a long time. Jamie's been doing it for 39 years. We should have been doing it for the same. We make it possible. Without her, we can't have no food. Guys, without her, we wouldn't have it. The food part is easy. Anyway, thank you, Jamie. I love you. Have a good holiday. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to start to get this, this festivity going. We're going to bring a gentleman who's been on the radio, television, been around this comedy for years and years and years. His name is Bill Kalmason. Let's give a nice round of applause to Bill Kalmason. Hello, Mr. Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. Hey, everybody. Let's give it up for Jamie. There's a lot of comedy clubs in this town within about less than a two mile radius from this spot right here. And no, but they have, none of these clubs have done anything but take your money. They give back nothing, but Jamie does. He serves this community. He's been doing it forever. That counts for something. Now they're all living in Trumptopia. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah, with the billionaire Brad boy, the PVP, Putin's vice president, that's what I call him. Everybody look around, take a look, because this group, we're here today, we, at this moment, we're all brothers and sisters, we're one family. That's right, it's, what's the day, it's Christmas, the birthday of our Lord, that's right. This great symbol, this avatar for peace and justice, which has been transformed into the greatest marketing tool of all time. I know, my parents, when they grant my grandparents when they came to this country, they actually converted from Judaism to capitalism. So they been very religious ever since. Actually, I'm a member of a cult that's called Jews for Gentile Girls. So. You digging it, right, brother? Yeah, you remember? No. Don't ask, don't tell. Okay, don't ask, don't tell. I won't ask, you won't tell, but we'll all yell. How's that for a poem? And here we go, this gentleman here never gets enough attention. He's ADD. He's always at a deficit for attention. And he's a walking Christmas candle. He's been here many times. He's the pot man. Thirty-nine years. Oh, for real? We started it. Wow. So your life has really gone nowhere in thirty-nine years. <laughs> That's not what I call progress. Okay. I get everybody high before they die. You get everybody high before you die. You're the checkout stand. He's the weed man. It's legal. How do you deal with all this legality now? I mean, it's legal. I'm the guy that changed the world. Medical marijuana. Medi you're the guy. He probably did. He really did. You are. So you're you're an important person. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, welcome to the show again. Once again, 39 years. He's been here forever. And I, I, I'm really thrilled to be here. I am living proof that if you're white and you're privileged and you hang in there and you pay your dues, 
and you stay disciplined, and you never, ever let go of your dreams, you still might not make it. So. Ah! <laughs> yeah, that's why I think it's so important, and you know, it is a spiritual day, that we all find that balance between the personal and the professional, that equilibrium. And I can say this, after a lot of inner work, after a lot of the meditation, I feel like I finally achieved that balance because now I have no personal life and no professional life. So, yeah, right now I'm pretty much, I have a new job, I'm a pickup artist. Yeah, for Uber, it's great. <laughs> no, it's great, you just, you just put the U on the windshield and the L on your forehead and bingo. You're in the gig economy, so here we go. Now, we got a special uh, batter up, number one. This gentleman is a graduate from, uh, you know, Jamie does a lot of things. One of this, one is this great, uh, where we all get together and celebrate our lives and ourselves. But he also has a comedy camp, because comedians just don't pop up like mushrooms on logs. They're actually groomed and trained, where we study the ancient art of humiliating ourselves every night in front of people that don't care. And this young man uh, is a graduate of the comedy camp. He's from Washington, D.C., but now he's in Agura, and he's a young comedian. And we're going to give it up right now for none other than Noah. Let's hear it right now. Come on, Come on Noah. Hustle up. Break it down. Give it to him straight. How are you guys doing? Good, good. How's your Christmas? Yeah. Any, any, anything you like? You guys get anything? I'm looking at <laughs> you did? Oh, you got a Hot Wheels? I remember Hot Wheels. I always wanted to drive a Hot Wheels. <laughs> anyway, so like, me and my mom go to the mall a lot, an unhealthy amount. I probably shouldn't say that, but <laughs> this time she dragged my dad with us. My dad has really bad feet. They're really bad. They look, you know, they're so long, they look like claws. Anybody here got bad feet? I, I know you're lying. I know you got bad feet. <laughs> I better not say that. You look like Mike Tyson fused with Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> so, my mom was like, great, you gotta come over to the nail salon. And my mom was like, oh, okay. Um, my dad walks over. He's like, I really don't want to go. My mom ends up getting him there because my mom, she does that. <laughs> so we get into the car, we head to the nail salon, and... You know how like the Asians are always on it? As soon as you walk in, she's like, Hi, I'm going to ask you now how may I help you? My name is Rebecca. What would you like? <laughs> my mom's like, uh, can you get um, three pedicures? She's like, sure, but do you want something else? <laughs> my mom's like, uh, what do you have? <laughs> she's like, we do hair, we do cornrow, weave, manicure, pedicure. Uh, what type of weave do you like? Eight inch or ten inch? My mom's like, I don't wear weave. <laughs> and then, so... Um, she's like, we also have massage, but that's a different company by my brother Ken. <laughs> so we walk over, um, I was like, just three penny curves. She's like, okay, uh, come this way, we'll get your chair ready for you, just put your feet in the tub, okay? And so we sit down, as soon as my dad reaches out to take off his stuff, she's like, no, no, honey, relax, relax. Our uh, chairs have massages, but not as good as my brother Ken. <laughs> so... My dad, uh, she takes off the sock, she's like, oh my god. <laughs> then the whole nail salon starts talking, like, <laughs> Oh my god, his feet so bad. And there's an African guy in there, he's like, that's worse than my Muda's. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then so we keep talking, and she's like, oh, should we get the saw? And we get the, she's like, yeah, yeah, get the saw. She's like, oh, Shannon, also get goggle, get goggle. And I've always wondered why Asian people have white names like Helen, Anna, Kate, <laughs> and not names like Sade or Shaniqua as my mom is in there. <laughs> so... Uh, Sharon gets the saw and she puts the saw up to my dad's feet and the saw breaks. <laughs> so we end up paying for the saw. Uh, I didn't do anything, uh, so I had to pay. <laughs> and as we're walking out, I feel like Rebecca's writing a sign, no black man over 60, we are not foot doctor. <laughs> so we make our way out and we go to the Starbucks and my dad said, you know, I'm just gonna wait in the car, you've embarrassed me enough. <laughs> so we go inside and there's like a big black African guy, darker and shorter, kind of look like him again. <laughs> <But laughs> kind of look like him. 
and um, he was like, man, may I ask you a question? And I was like, sure, go ahead. Uh, he's like, can I say you want to find a piece of chocolate that I would like to marry? And uh, I can be your king and you can be my queen. We can go all together. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there right there. And everybody thinks I'm like over 18, but I'm only 16. <laughs> but um, so she, he keeps talking to my mom. And my mom's blushing and whatnot. And he's like, man. May I buy you a Starbucks drink? <laughs> and my mom's like, sure, uh, let me get a Frappuccino Venti with a uh, side of whipped cream light. I'm lactose intolerant, so please don't add milk. <laughs> so he ends up getting it. The order comes up to a lot, and he's like, no problem, man. And my dad barges in. He's like, what's going on? I'm taking, <laughs> you guys are taking forever. And we end up leaving. The guy's like, she's with me. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad's like, okay. <laughs> and my mom ends up walking away, and um, my mom's like, bye, Bobo. <laughs> that's his name. And yeah, that's pretty much our story. This is it. Um, thanks for the comedy camp. Uh, shout out to Comedy Camp. <laughs> and Jamie Masada, and everybody. And I hope you enjoy your Christmas. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Give it up for Noah. years old he's doing this stuff. Wow, can you imagine 16? I mean like people say me, I'm in like right now actually at this moment. No no at this no no wait well, right now I'm as old as I've ever been. And I'm as young as I'll ever be. Yeah. I finally reached that age where I can date younger women and they can be old. <laughs> Like 35, 35. Yeah, no, the other night I was out with my little nifty 50 something. We were doing a little touchy feely, little panky on the hanky. Uh, and my hand and say a little thong, and there was a diaper. And uh, no, she pulled away. And I said, What's the matter? And she goes, I'm saving it. I said, what? She goes, I'm saving it. And I thought, Well, listen, sweetheart. Um, it ain't going up in value. Uh, you're not earning interest on it, so my recommendation would be to sell. So. Give it away. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to keep this going. We have a very special guest. This young lady, you've seen her. She was, uh, she was right next to me doing the uh, mashed potatoes, but you've also seen her on 30 Rock and The View, and she's going to be the host of the Newlywed Show, but she's here right now, Christmas Eve tonight, let's hear it for Sherry Shepard! Hey! Don't. 
And so, and look, it might be my third divorce. I'm look, I'm just I'm I'm sitting here going, it is so many handsome men here. I did not now the next thing I gotta ask, bitch yo, how's your credit? <laughs> you know, it really don't have to be, I can give us a house. That's okay. My credit is all right. I can do it. Look, I've done all the work the other two marriages. This is third marriage. Oh. No, I'm happily single. I am happily single. And, and here's the thing. I, I, you know, I'm a comic because I just haven't been lucky in love. My first marriage, I married a comic. And ladies, if you're thinking to yourself, wow, what would it be like to be married to a comic? They're so glamorous. They're so funny. Slit your wrists right now. Not fun at all. And I was happily married. I met the comic. I met him here 17 years ago. We got married. We had a child. But then I found out he had cheated on me. And that, yeah, I know. They hit you right there. I don't know why. Did I try to ask before I hit him in the head?